International Barbecue Day. Everybody loves barbecue, right? It's Thursday afternoon, so why not enjoy barbecue? We are here at Ray's Barbecue Shack, and this is Mr. Ray. Hello, hello. Hello, how's everyone doing today? And so, tell us a little bit, of, tell us about your restaurant, because you've been in barbecue for, what, decades, right? You got decades. your start in 1984? 1984, and uh, we started with a little, just a truck off of a, with a, a barbecue pit and truck, moved to a, a food truck, and now we've been blessed to have our own business now, third natural now, Spanish truck. Spanish Trail is not far from U of H. Go Cougs. Yes, I'm biased. I split that in because I went to the University yes, of Houston. Um, and you also used to work for the Harris County Sheriff's Department before you kind of went all the way in the barbecue business, right? That's correct. I worked for the Harris County Sheriff's Office uh, for 30 years. I uh, used to do barbecue as well during that same time on the weekends. And then, so it just started out home cooking, and then we, I did that. And then I was able to, once I retired, I just said to the family, why don't we just try and see what we can do? Because we had a very good clientele from our food truck. So, like I said, we're here for National Barbecue Day, and you know barbecue. There's lots of different foods and inspirations. What kind of influence does your barbecue have? Well, I, you know, once being from Texas, of course, we're known for our for our barbecue grill meats, or however you want to say, smokes, uh, smoked meats. And what we've been able to do is to incorporate our own special seasoning. Uh, we use the very best cuts of meat. And, you know, when people come from all over the world, of course they want to go to barbecue. So I would suggest that they come to raise barbecue chef. You guys are going to show us some tips today. Y'all yes. are going to show us what to do to avoid the rookie mistakes so you can have the best National Barbecue Day ever. And then on top of that, y'all have Oxtail Thursday today. Oxtail Thursdays today. I and mean, they are very tender, very, uh, a lot of love, you know. And I would suggest, you know, if you had never tried them, please stop by. Now, one thing about it, we do about 100 pounds, and they would usually around 3 o'clock. This was over. It's gone by 3 o'clock. It's gone. Okay, so you only have a few hours to enjoy Oxtail Thursday. So thank you so much, Mr. Thank Ray. Thank you so much for having us on your show today at TV. And thank everybody for all of the support that you've ever given. Thank you. And then Herb back here is also someone who works with you, yes? Yes. Your so you're going to hook us up with some tips now. Uh, yeah, so right here what we're going to do, uh, kind of show you how we season our ribs. Uh, that's something that we take very much pride in. And I think that's one of the staples here at Ray's uh, Barbecue Shack is our ribs and so we kind of take a you know an approach to it uh how we do our ribs and i think everybody will enjoy it okay so let's get started with this then so we have everything all set up i guess i i was going to try to participate in this <laughs> i will be honest with you i cannot cook so no, i am, no, I am depending on you well yeah. okay but um i'm depending on you to guide me through this so all i guess right. i need to slide on some gloves while i do that um right. why don't you kind of explain what's going on here all right so right here we have a our pork spare ribs. So that's one of the staples here at Ray's Barbecue. So this is how it starts. It's a raw pork spare rib. And we take, first First of all, we wash our meat off before we even go to season it. So, you know, that's something I think uh, grandmothers and mothers taught us uh, to do uh, before we, you know, handle any type of meat. And so we have the pork spare ribs right here. We take this little flap right here and we cut it off. Flap off right here, right here, and then we take this extra part of the meat right here and we cut this off right here because this is not going to do anything but take up space in the pit. And then we can use this. We uh, we can also use this part of the meat. We smoke it as well, and then we use it in you know our other items, our side items, our rice, our beans, and stuff like that. So. And now, right here, this is our house rub right here. So this is the house rub and one of the spices Mr. Ray was talking about earlier. What's and in so, the house rub? Oh. oh, is that a, is that a mm. oh no, is that a trade secret? I can't get <laughs> yes, that away. Okay, yeah, well. No, we be lying to? Yeah, well, nah, yeah, okay. we can't well, do the trade secret. <laughs> yeah. Well, just, tr no, no. just trust so. that the rub will rub yeah. you the right way. Okay. Yeah, man, so, okay, so we put a little bit on right here. On the front, and kind of rub it in a little bit here. Take a little bit on the back right here. Kind of rub it in a little bit. Now, one.
one thing that we do here uh, that might be a little bit different, though this is a dry rub, we like to use just a little bit, just a little bit, just a little bit of oil right here, and we just, just to help it spread across the ridge. Not too much, and then we kind of rub it on in. And we're gonna do the same thing to the back side. We're gonna just put just a little bit right here. Set that down, maybe get a little more seasoning on it. And then we're gonna rub it in. Same thing with this side. Now we're ready to put those on the pit. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes, ma'am. So, do you want to so try now one? I, okay, <laughs> sure, yes. Let me, I'll have at it. Okay. All right. We have this right here. Okay. All right. Pull this up. Okay, well, I'll need you to hold this. <laughs> okay, I guess. All right. I'll be the one to hold the mic. <laughs> Okay, so the first thing you did was you cut this, right? Yep. Okay. Well, so far, See, so good with a knife. That. That's not bad, look right? Look at that, yep. Okay. Set right. it down. So that's that. Uh-huh. Okay. As a matter of fact, you can keep that flap on because it's okay. a lot shorter than the oven. So you can go straight into seasoning. Okay. All right. So you grab your dry rub. Yep. Can you ever put too much dry rub on? There's no such thing as too much love, so I'm gonna too go with the no. Love. Yes, man. You always want to err on the side of too much. Well, you know what? That that reminds me too, because you guys say you you cook with a lot of soul. So yes. I mean, what does that mean for people that are coming here? Well, that means the recipes that were taught uh, to us came from our grandmother, just came from our mothers, and it came down from family. And so every time we did barbecues, every time you know we had stuff going on, it was done with the family and was done. Love and done with happiness. Yes. Okay, so the rub is on and then you grab the oil. oil. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Just grab a little bit of that oil. Okay. See, I'm, I'm, think, I'm starting Got to think it? you're a natural. Okay, well, don't have, don't have <laughs> well, too much I'm confidence start, in me yet. <laughs> I'm starting to think you're a natural. <laughs> okay, all right. Yes, right? ma'am. Okay. So what are some of the mistakes, I guess, that you see people make when they're barbecuing? I mean, everybody wants to have great barbecue, you're serving it up. You know, I think everybody feels like they're a pit master. Well, one, <laughs> one of the things that a lot of people make the mistake is rushing. Okay. So you can't really rush barbecue. You know, it takes time, it takes effort. So it's not something you can do in a couple of hours. So that's one of the biggest mistakes that we see people make. They try to rush their order, and they try to rush their food, and barbecue is one of those things, it, it can't be rushed. All right, so take your time. Yes, ma'am. Use it with love. So I think that's as important as any ingredients that you can have. So after we put our dry rub on, we put the oil, and then we yes, put it in there. Yep, okay. put it in there, and then we use we let uh, that seasoning sit in for about, about 12 hours to a day. So oh, usually wow, a day, wow, yes. Wow. Let it sit in I'll for I'll take it back for you so that <laughs> yes, way you can <laughs> so we function we let it, properly. Yeah, we let it sit for a day. And then we take it out and then we put it on early in the morning, put it on the pit. And those ribs right there take about four hours, you know, about four hours or so to cook. So what's it like? Being a pit master, what is the life of a pit master? Like? <laughs> early mornings, you know, our pit guys here, I mean, they come in early in the morning and they get their day started. So they're here about 5 o'clock in the morning. The guys at night crew, they don't leave until about midnight. Wow. You know, they're leaving like late. And so we keep the pit going all night for our briskets, which takes about 14 hours. Wow. And so we have, so it's just a late night. So we have guys that constantly come in and make sure, you know, that they, uh, you know, got everything on and ready for the day. So it's very taxing. <laughs> it is. Uh, there's a lot of 
work that goes into this. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so you show me how to do the ribs. What else can we do with this to have an amazing national barbecue day? Well, see, then it also it comes to the, the cutting of the order and how we cut it. So uh, behind us, we have one of the best cutters uh, in the city, uh, Mr. Antiaco Reyes. And uh, actually, he's going to cut into our brisket right now. Okay. So if you want to yeah. uh, watch him uh, cut our brisket. So this is the, the brisket that we have here that we worked on uh, for about 14 hours. And uh, this is him cutting it. You, also, you always want to cut against the grain. Because you can work 14 hours on a brisket, and then you can mess it up just by how you cut it. So you always want to cut against the grain, so that way you can make sure it can pull up on part and it's really tender. And that's what we like. We like tender barbecue. <laughs> Yes, Hickory smoked barbecue. So what else What else can you tell for people who are at home who want to do this, want to make sure that it comes out just like Mr. Ray's? What other things should people know? They shouldn't drink and barbecue at the same time. <laughs> Which sounds, that, is, that sounds like an oxymoron because if you're at a barbecue and you're having a good time and you're dancing and stuff. The good time is for everybody else that's at the barbecue. The person behind the pit shouldn't be drinking because I've seen it happen plenty of times where guys have called me, you know, hey, Herb, how do I do this? You know, so they're on their pits and then I said, well, have you been drinking? Yeah, and I fell, then they called me back a couple of hours, man, I fell asleep on the pit and my ribs burned. <laughs> or I fell asleep and my brisket, you know, wasn't done or I didn't move my stuff. So, our poor thing, don't drink in barbecue. You, won't, you wouldn't want to get in the car with somebody that's been drinking and driving, and I don't want to eat food from somebody who's been drinking and killed. Okay, so that's a good point. So don't sip wine or do any of the rest of that stuff. Wine and bar, that's not the time you can drink your wine. You have a one beer limit for every two hours you're working on the pit. That's about it. So you can have that one beer every two hours. Well, one of the things I saw too is that everything is homemade, fresh, every day, the size, the desserts. Yes. What kinds of desserts do you guys have? Uh, so the desserts we have, we have peach cobbler, banana pudding, and we have sweet potato pie. We also have cakes. Uh, one of the things that we're very proud of is the fact that we make everything in-house. Uh, everything is from recipes. Like I said earlier, Pat and I, your family. So, you know, we do everything here. I mean, even on this, you know, pot over here, we had the potatoes boiling and getting ready for the potato salad. So as soon as that get off, and so we do everything in house. So that's one of the things that I think we're very proud of that we do here. So let's get back to our ribs. So what's the next thing we need to do? We were talking earlier before we got started with everything that it gets really smoky back here, and some of us have to kind of <laughs> our eyes start watering and everything because you can just feel it. I can feel it in my throat a little bit. So we want to see some of that smokiness action. Okay. So how do we how do we get into so, that? So so the one thing here we have a smoke room. So. We want to caution all the viewers out there. You're about to walk into a pit smoke room. So uh, we're about to go in here. Like I said, we have our pits uh, indoor and we have some outdoor. But the one we're going to go into our smoke room. So let's go ahead that way. We're going to the smoke room. I think you can kind of maybe see the smoke already. Or maybe that's just me and my eyes glazing over. So yes, this is a what we have here the smoke room. So this is one of our uh, big smokers right here. Uh, so we put the food on for, like I said, the ribs go on for about four hours or so, and then the brisket goes on for about anywhere between 12 and 14 hours. It just depends on the size of the, uh, the size of the brisket. Okay. So just to kind of, can you get a shot right here? Yeah. And then we're gonna hurry up and get back inside. Okay. So, okay. So blink <laughs> and you'll miss it. Okay. So here's the smoke right here. I don't know if you can zoom in on some of the ribs. Now my hands are used to the heat, so here's some of the ribs we have on the bottom that's still almost ready to be coming out. And here's some of our briskets that's still quite not ready to go. to have your mind right sometimes when you're coming down in the smoke room. So one of the things you kind of your eyes, your eyes and your mind kind of get you know, used to a little bit. I know the first thing that happens, tears start running down yeah, your I eyes. And so you're like, oh my God, I just felt like I got hit by a storm. Uh, so that's kind of how we work. And then uh, up front right here, 
everything kind of got out the way. We also make fish uh, here. We make it in-house. We have our own batters, our own seasoning. So we have our fish going, and then the food kind of passes through the, uh, the window. And we do want to emphasize, too, we're in a working kitchen, so there's a lot of different things going on. People aren't stopping to pose or anything like that because they're trying to get food ready yes, for yes. all of the people who come in here. And it gets pretty busy in here sometimes. Yes, yes. So especially, uh, like I said, some days, like the Oxtail Thursday is a very popular day. Uh, we also do beef ribs on Friday. You know, it gets, it gets really packed in here. Um, we're also blessed to say that on the 15th of June, we're going to be celebrating our one-year anniversary. In this building. And this so, right, yeah. your other location is just down the street, right? Yeah, yeah, so we moved into this building about a year ago. So on June 15th, we're going to be celebrating our one-year anniversary here. Uh, from 12 to 3, we'll have a DJ, face painters, uh, balloon artists, and stuff like that. And then one of my favorite holidays we'll also be celebrating will be Juneteenth. So that will be that Wednesday. So we're going to be having a big celebration here, Juneteenth. Uh, you know, happy hour special throughout the day. And then 10% discounts for everybody, but that's one of the things that, you know, we want to get behind here at Great Park. So, again, since it's National Barbecue Day, what are some of the dishes that you would say just, you have to cook, you have to have it today? But you have to have ribs. One, first and foremost, you can't be in Texas, you can't be on this side of town without getting ribs. The brisket is a must, and we also uh, smoke our own sauce. So we have a, a, a Texas trio, the brisket, ribs, and sauce. And then the potato salad and beans, I don't think you guys can miss. And we also have the fried corn that is to die for. So I'm going to have the young lady drop some fried corn. Uh, for you guys to try out as well. So yeah. So can we can we look for five corn now? Or uh, it... Yes, ma'am. She's gonna drop it right now. Okay. And then I'm gonna have uh, our friend here um, give us a, a rib, brisket, and sausage uh, plate. He's gonna plate it for us. Great. Right, right. And then we will get that out and ready for you guys. Okay. Great. So what are some of the seasonings that you would say just really make a meal pop? Um, really, it's whatever to your taste. You know, everybody has different tastes. Everybody has different styles. I know um, on our briskets, we make sure we use salt and pepper. Uh, you know, salt and pepper along with our rub. Um, in the in the ribs, we have a little more uh, East Texas style on the ribs. So a lot of little paprikas, little sugar, some other spices, garlic that's in there that kind of really brings out the flavor of the ribs. So we're in Texas, so we might be a bit biased, but I know a lot of times there's competition over the best barbecues. Have you had the Kansas City barbecues and things like that? Have you heard people kind of comparing well, it? Well, so the one thing, I did live in Kansas City uh, for a while, and so, you know, Kansas City has their own style. They use a lot of sauce, uh, you know, with their meats. One thing about Texas barbecue, we don't really sauce, we don't sauce our meat. Um, you know, while it's on the pit. Now, we have a homemade sauce that we do use, uh, but that is something that is sauce optional. <laughs> you know, so we don't put it on anything. Uh, we have it and it's ready for if our customers want to put it on top of the meat. You know, we take pride in the sauce, but I would always have to give my thumbs up to Texas barbecue. I'm just saying. Thumbs up to Texas barbecue. I don't think you're yes. going to get any arguments for the most part. <laughs> yes, I don't know. We're so diverse. People come from all over. have a lot of opinions. But let's look at more food. Where are we heading next with more about this? All right. My uh, gentleman's over here. He's going to prepare. He's going to prepare up the plate and we're going to go with. Uh, we're going to go with ribs, we're going to go with ribs, uh, brisket, and sausage on our plate. And then let me help him get the ribs out. So did you learn, how did you get into doing this? Did you always know that you wanted to be interested in something like this? Or how did you end up here at Ray's Barbecue? Um, Ray, Ray and my mom, uh, they uh, saw this idea way before I did. Um, my mom would help Ray out on his uh, food truck and stuff like that and get stuff together. And then I used to barbecue when I was in Kansas City, but I just did it very small. Uh, I didn't do it, you know, on a big scale. And so they, hey, we have this idea. We have, you know, Ray here that got a great following in Houston. And we all decided, you know what, let's get a brick and mortar going. So we just pulled our resources and got a uh, you know brick and mortar going, and here we are today. 
And Mr. Ray is a legend when it comes to all this <laughs> yes, stuff, right? Yes, yes. So he, he is definitely a legend. Uh, he put a lot of uh, time and effort into, you know, what he does and, you know, his operation. So that was something he taught me and then we taught, you know, our pit guys here, you know, to do as well. Right. Well, is it, is it ready to eat? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> So after those four hours, these are how the ribs come out. And how do you <laughs> right know that here. your ribs came out right? I mean, how do you know? Well, usually we take a we use a uh, thermometer to make sure they're at the proper temperature. But we also do a p piano test. Piano uh, test. A piano okay. test. What's that? With the ribs. So you actually take your fingers between the bones of the rib, and if your finger can slide through the meat of the rib, then it's ready. Okay. Yes, ma'am. So that's what we call the piano test. Test. And so here's the ribs right here, and then this is for you guys to try out. So, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. That film was brought to you by our ABC 13 video producer Owen, who is always going to give you a thumbs up when it comes to food. Oh, yes, ma'am. And so, right here, and then here is the matriarch of the, of the house. The lady uh, behind all the sides, that is my mother, Maxine. Oh, get out of so, here, Maxine. Hi, How are Maxine. you? I love your sunglasses, by the way. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and welcome to Ray's. Oh, thank you. We're talking, it's National Barbecue Day. As you know, Herb here has been giving us the 411 on what to know, tips and tricks, things to avoid, what to do. What can you add about that? Well, one thing with the barbecue, you have to have good sides. Your sides have to be good. And all of our sides are homemade. We make them from scratch. We peel potatoes every day. You know, the whole gamut. So, you know, and these are family recipes that we have here. And our employees have embraced them, and it's very consistent. Well, one of the things, one of the main tips I think that all sticks with me today is Irv said, don't barbecue and drink. So. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but, I, would, I would agree to that. I would agree to that. Yes. So I think, well, then we're going to try some of this. And I'll, oh, and I'll try to hook you up if I can. I'll try to see what I can do. <laughs> you must try. Okay, and all right. And plus our fried corn on the cob. You've got to try the fried corn on the cob. Well, Irv was talking about that, too. And I mean, rodeo time, we fry everything. Is there anything else that you guys fry uh, aside from the corn? Um, no, we do have... Um, Fried baby back ribs, so Ooh. and so we're one of the few that that do that, yeah, and that's real popular as well. But the fried corn, the cob is a must-have. Okay, so we'll definitely have to hook that up on. Okay, so let's go for this. Let's see. <laughs> well, I don't want to be rude and talk with my mouth full. So <laughs> Owen, just oh, shoot the okay. food. Just shoot the food. So it's people okay. Can't <laughs> but it is really tender. Um, Herb, you're right. It does pass the piano test, you said it is. That's Owen getting in there. <laughs> yeah, this is good. Mm -hmm. You haven't heard me talking because... I've been trying to chew and have had it, and so... That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> this is really good. So talk to me about these sides, too, because you said your sides are homemade, so what else is on this dish? Right. We have um, we have beans. We have potato salad. We, we have smoked macaroni and cheese. We have fried corn on the cob, uh, cucumber salad. Um, we have green beans. And... Um, uh, our famous barbecue beans, as I said before. Well, I want to try the famous barbecue beans, but I don't want to chug it, so... <laughs> I'm going to get you some plastic wear, yeah. plastic wear. Yes. They do have plenty of plastic wear here, too, by the way, but... I feel like it's National Barbecue Day, so you can chug it. Chug those barbecue beans if you want, but no. <laughs> Is there anything else you think that people should know um, when it comes to celebrating this day? Well, one good thing, um, we're we're probably 
really going to be busy today because everybody recognizes that it is National um, Barbecue Day, and so we're we're ready. We're prepared. All right. Well, we want to thank you guys so much for showing us the inner workings of your kitchen here at the Classic Race Barbecue. And then also, as Urban mentioned, oh my goodness, wait a minute. Hold the phone. This is the fried corn? Yes, this <laughs> is the fried corn. This is the famous fried corn. Oh my gosh. Owen, are you zooming in on this? <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's like, stop bossing me around and let me eat. But <laughs> right, you might want to eat that off camera. Well, I, yeah. <laughs> For sure, for sure. I, I, I think it'd be cool to maybe go viral, but for the right reasons. You know, you don't want to go viral because you ate horribly on, on camera. So anyway, thank you again, guys, for hosting us here in your kitchen. And then Herb mentioned that you guys have events on June 15th coming up, right? This week, June 15th, we have our one-year anniversary that's going to be here. We're going to have a DJ from 12 to 3 all day. We're going to do a 2% discount, face painting, balloon orders. We're just going to have a great time. And then also, like I said, one of my favorite holidays, Juneteenth, we're going to backdoor because we're going to party all June. You know, this is what we're going to do during the, uh, during the summer here at Ray's Barbecue. So we're going to have a DJ come out on Juneteenth. Uh, so we're going to have the smoke in the air. <laughs> we the smoke room experience. Yeah, we're going to definitely have the smoke in the air. Uh, we're going to have good vibes, good people, good drinks, good food. So, you know, everybody come on out, celebrate, hang out uh, with the crew here at Ray's Real Pit Barbecue Chef. Great. So leave the barbecue into you guys so that way y'all can party and dance in safety, okay? All right, everyone, enjoy your National Barbecue Day.